I have a new problem now. I've been asked to, no, I haven't been given a picture this time. I have to make my own picture. I'll make it nice and big so I don't run into any trouble. I'm going to find a region bounded by y equals 2x. Now let's see, I don't want to use many of my special colors. y equals 2x, that is a slope of 2. I know the vertical line x equals 1. I'm going to mark that as 1. This is y equals 2x. And I think we can agree that that is a triangular shape. I'm going to shade it in a little bit so I know what region I'm talking about. I'm going to call it region R. And I've been asked to revolve it about the line x equals 1. Well, x equals 1 is a vertical axis. I am going to do my best to use all of those steps. So I've shaded in my region R. I'm going to use red to draw my axis of revolution. I am going to reflect my region R over that axis. I would get the reflection, which I'm going to call reflected R. So now I see my well, it's a one, it's a two-dimensional view of my three-dimensional object. If I look at it from the side, it's going to look like a big triangle. If I actually tried to make it in real life, it's going to look like a cone. So at this point, if you figure out that you, that this really is a cone and you want to use the volume, the formula for volume of a cone, that's cool. They won't do that on an AP test because they want to check that you learned the calculus. Um, but we can use that formula at the end to check our work. I'm going to try to draw a slice. So a slice in this case, I'm going to start at my axis of revolution. I'm going to draw toward the boundary that I know, and then I'm going to go back behind the axis. Notice here, I've, I made that a straight line. I've revolved around a vertical axis, so I'm going to have to take slices that are horizontal. So I'm going to draw a horizontal slice. I'm going to draw out here toward y equals 2x. I'm going to draw back that way. There we go. Now I can try to draw my radius. My radius should start at the axis of revolution and go toward the outside edge of my, my disk, my green disk. It should bump into some curve that's labeled. Like I don't want to bump it into this curve because I didn't, I don't know the formula for that. I can figure it out, but then I have to stop and figure it out. I'm going to draw the other direction because that's where I know the formula for. So I'm going to draw from here to here. Okay, so think about some differences this time. I have a radius that happens to be a horizontal line. How can I find the distance of this horizontal blue line? Well, every point on that blue line has the same y coordinate. The y coordinates don't contribute to the distance. I'm going to find the difference between the x on the left and the x on the right. And I want to subtract right minus left so that my answer comes out positive because obviously that radius has a positive length. So I'm going, I'm going to have a problem because that x coordinate there is definitely x equals 1. Hmm, let's see, I'm going to draw a little arrow here in case it's helpful. That x coordinate is 1, comma, I don't know, whatever my y is. I sort of chose randomly where I was going to how high up I was going to draw my radius. So I need to figure out that guy. Well, that has the same y coordinate of 1, but it has an x coordinate. I don't know. I don't have an expression for x. I have an expression for y. So I'm going to take y equals 2x. I have to isolate the x. If y equals 2x, imagine dividing both sides by 2. y over 2 equals x. Now I have an expression for the x coordinate of every point on that line. And that's what I'm going to use here. This is y over 2 comma y. And now I know I need to subtract the x coordinate on the right minus the x coordinate on the left because I have a horizontal line segment so I'm going to find the difference in the x's. Well here are my two x's. I want to subtract y uh, rightmost minus leftmost. This is an expression for the radius of the green slice that I drew. 
Now that I've decided on an expression for the radius, and I hope we can all agree that in this case I've taken a slice that's horizontal, so its thickness is a small change in y. I'm going to have to write a y in a roll. Let me move me out of the way, and we will write a y in a roll. So I know I'm going to use dy. Uh, so the the um, limits on my integral have to be y values. The lowest down y in my picture is clearly y equals zero. The highest up y value, it's that point. It happens when x equals one, but I need to figure out the y coordinate there. Notice that the place where x equals one and y equals two x, y is gonna equal two. Remember, every slice is gonna be a circle with thickness. So that's a cylinder. So it's gonna be pi r squared. And then this is my h for the m of the volume of a cylinder. So here's, I'll put my pi out because I didn't give myself much room. You could leave the pi inside the integral or outside the integral, either one, totally correct. This is supposed to be r squared here. So pi r squared times the height. And my height, no, sorry, my radius, I already said, I wrote this expression over here, one minus y over two. There you go, I would expect um, on the AP test, they would not ask you to evaluate this integral. If they did ask you to evaluate this integral, notice your fastest bet here is to um, multiply out one minus y over two times one minus y over two, make your four multiplications, FOIL, right? And then you're integrating a polynomial function. Okay, and then just to warm us up for the next uh, set of video, the one other complication that we might see when we have a um, solid of revolution. We might end up with a hole in the middle of our slice. So imagine a CD. That's why I had this problem on the board the other day. A CD, it's, it's like a, it's a disc, but it has a hole in the middle. So it's a cylinder with a very thin height, a very short height, but there's also this space in the middle that would need to get subtracted out if you were gonna figure out the volume. I'm gonna draw a better picture and label some things. So I'm gonna try to draw this so it looks like it has height. So I'm gonna say if the thickness was two, we'll just go without units for a second here. Um, and we talked about two different ways you could compute this volume, right? You could find the surface area of the CD, which is the area of the big circle minus the area of the hole, and then multiply that by two. Or you could find the volume of the thing as if it had no hole, so pi r squared times h, and then subtract out the volume of the hole. I'm gonna call the big radius, I don't know, 10. I'm gonna call that little r for little radius, the radius of the hole. It's a convention you see used in the textbook and um, people would probably know exactly what you're talking about if you walked up to another calculus student and talked about big R and little r. Well, let's just make that three, just to have some nice roundish, smallish numbers. So I have a couple of options here. I can compute pi times squared minus little r squared. I could do pi r squared h minus pi little r squared h. They are all gonna get me to the same calculation, um, which is gonna be pi times 10 squared. Here's a third way I could do it. Minus pi times three squared times the thickness. So all three of those expressions are totally appropriate. They're just algebraic manipulations of that same expression. They're all algebraic manipulations of each other. So just notice that that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use probably all three of them interchangeably to find the volume of a washer. And that's what I mean. That's a, it's a disc, but it has a hole in the middle. It's the same shape as a CD, but by the time we were writing textbooks to talk about this method, nobody had heard of a CD yet. So we are going to typically call it a washer.